Welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Reitz. I'll be your host, and this podcast exists to help you improve your communication skills, whether you communicate one-on-one to a team, from a stage, or from behind a screen. We know that when we improve our communication skills as leaders, it exponentially changes everything. It improves our relationships, it improves our leadership skills, and it improves our business skills. So let's get ready to dive into this next episode. Well, have you ever wondered how you can make a substantial difference in the world? Maybe for some of you, that's just way too big of a thought. The idea of making a difference in the world is too massive. So how can you make a difference in your part of the world? The reality is, is that we as leaders, we have this tremendous gift of influence and we get to steward it. We get to use it either in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. And so how, how do we do that? How do we use it to the way that it's been given? And we all do it differently. Well, today I'm so honored to be joined by a great author and consultant and coach and speaker, Robert Kalin. We're going to unpack his new book, a Generous Influencers, You Hold the Key to Creating a Positive Impact. We're going to have a conversation around all of these things, our influence, our stewardship, our generosity, and you know the way that we make a difference in this world. I met Robert back at a conference back in November, and immediately we just kind of had this leadership connection, and I just loved listening to his heart and the different things that they were doing on the way other side of the country from where we are. And that's why I love this podcast community because we get to connect with people literally around the country and around the world. So, uh, Robert, thank you so much for being on the Speak With People podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much, my friend. It's an honor to be here. Um, I'm excited for our conversation today. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you for being on. And again, loved connecting back in November. And, you know, especially as we started talking leadership, I was like, oh, I got, I got to have Robert on the podcast. <laughs> so I, I, right after we met, you actually launched the lead with people piece to your podcast. And I was yes. like, yes, he's speaking my language. I love this. <laughs> Great series, by the way. Loved it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, So for our our audience, our listeners, maybe give us a little bit of your story, who you are, what you do, you know, where you're from, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's hard to put it into a small package because there's a lot going on, man. Um, But if I was if I was to uh, kind of boil it down a little bit, obviously, my name is Robert Kalen. I come from the Pacific Northwest in the Seattle area. And um, my wife and I have three kids um, and we just love people. I think that's, that's something that, um, didn't start out with me. (laughs) Um, I actually was super shy, super afraid of like communicating and speaking. Um, when I was in high school, I transferred high schools to get out of doing a presentation. Um, and now I'm speaking on stages and, um, it all comes from the fact that my perspective shifted from, it's all about me to it's all about other people. Mm. And, you know, the story of my life really has been that journey, you know, Um, having my kids was the first recognition, I think, of stepping outside of myself in a big significant way, right? Yep. Where it's like, dude, this isn't about me anymore. This is about them. Yep. Um, And so that played a huge role in, in, in my leadership journey and, and, I think God used it in a big way. Um, so again, we're from Pacific Northwest, Seattle area. Uh, I just wrote a book that came out in November. Actually, right after we met, it was officially launched. Generous Influencers this is my first book. Uh, did not intend on writing a book ever in my life. And <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do... Um, leadership development. So coaching, uh, consulting, uh, workshops. I also own a cafe uh, in my downtown of the city that I live in. It's called Puyallup, which nobody could ever say it. And when you write it out, they're like, what is that? Um, but Puyallup actually means the, the land of generous people. Um, it's a native American word and it has connected with me in a, in a really deep and profound way. And, um, wow. yeah. Wow. Seventh generation in Puyallup here. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Wow. 
That that's fantastic. So so uh, business owner with the cafe, business yep. owner with your coaching and consulting and speaking, and then you have a nonprofit as well, right? I do. Yeah, I do also have a nonprofit that I I run called Generous Influencers, um, which preceded the book. Hmm. And that started in the midst of COVID. So I'm sitting in my cafe. Um, Our part of the world shut down completely. Like we weren't allowed to have people in our restaurant to sit Hmm. down and, and things. And so in the midst of COVID, I'm looking at our space and going, okay, what if I had some friends come in here that I know that, you know, they have really small businesses that they lost all their opportunities. People aren't gathering together. What if we had them pop up when people come in here to grab a coffee? Um, they can do a little shop and go, you know? Mm. And so we did that and it grew from three to 13 vendors. I ended up having to like <laughs> literally put people out on the sidewalk. Um, and we're looking across the street. So where we're located, we're right in the heart of our downtown. Mm. And across the street is like the main park. It's called Pioneer Park. And um, we're looking over there and it's a great event space. Or mm. like, you know what? In the spring, we're, we're going to move over there and we're going to see who would like to be in part of this thing. Well, what we realized is <clears throat> it became a huge deal. We now have um, regularly 40 to 50 vendors that show up every Thursday to, to do business. And then we offer workshops for them to grow their businesses and grow themselves as leaders. Uh, so they can become the leader that their business needs for them to succeed. Come on. Yeah. Wow. Super That's fun. exciting. That's really yeah. exciting. So when did you, when did you first start writing the book then? Where, where did the, <clears throat> you talk about, it wasn't really, I didn't really expect I was going to write a book, but when was the seed planted? What was the final, you know, nail in the coffin that you said, I got to write this book. I got to, I got to move it forward. Yeah. You know, I think it was really in my communication journey. I think a lot, I don't necessarily talk all the time. (laughs) And, uh, as I was, as I was kind of like processing that, what's a good way for me to get my, not only my thoughts out, but my philosophical thoughts out around how I operate my life and the things Mm. that I do that I can share with other people in a pretty concise way. Right. Um, a lot of times when I talk, I do a lot more thinking. I think, I think that's what it is. And I think I, I realized that I need to get my thoughts on paper so I can communicate effectively with people, mentor Mm -hmm. people from afar not just people that I have influence with right here, right now, right? Like my wife and my kids and my employees, but um, people who may be on the outskirts of the following, I, I, so to speak, right? Maybe they're not involved directly with me, but they know who I am and they kind of want to know, well, what, what's, what's more about this guy? What's mm. going on here? What's this movement? Yep. What's, yeah. So that's really what was the nail in the coffin. I put a Facebook post out there and said, hey guys, I'm thinking about writing a book. And I want you to hold me accountable. And from that moment, I couldn't not do it because I put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Which I did want to mention. I do have, I, I, I just thought of this because you are a, you are a coffee person. I mean, you run, you run a cafe and very often people uh, compliment our speak with people mugs because they are handmade by an artist in Michigan. And oh, because I use a, a mug that looks this great, uh, people think I'm a coffee, you know, kind of sewer and it's, it's just water. So right in the beginning, I just want to, you know, kind of, kind of come clean that way, but well, we'll forgive you. All right. All right. <laughs> I mean, coffee, really coffee is just filtered water anyway. Right. You just filter <laughs> it through coffee beans. So. Right. Right. And, We're one and, in the same. and at least it's not the brown water like Ted Lasso talks about. So yes, exactly. <laughs> Okay. So we both are passionate about leadership. It's one of the reasons we both, you know, we connected so well back in November, you know, as it comes to leadership, you spend time coaching other leaders, business leaders. Uh, Could you kind of walk us through, paint us a picture of of what a healthy leader is? What does a healthy leader do? How do they operate? What's important to a healthy leader? Would love for you to just kind of unpack that for a second. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Great question. I think, um, a lot of times it's easy for us to understand what something is by looking at what it's not. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, and so if we're going to, if we're going to talk a little bit about a healthy leader, what's an unhealthy leader, we all can have examples of 
unhealthy leaders that we've experienced in life. Um, and what we end up doing is we go, oh, that's what not to do, right? And we do the opposite of that. Mm. Um, Marcus Buckingham shared uh, a really awesome story. He was talking about research, right? When you do research on things that are kind of unmeasurable, like employee engagement, um, you know, things like that, what we end up doing is we study it and then we do the opposite. Mm. Right. We study, we do exit interviews for people that are leaving. Um, we study disease to figure out how to be healthy. We literally just look at the the thing and we flip it and we get the opposite. We study, uh, I don't know, good, I suppose. And we say, well, um, let's just do the op or we study the bad. Right. And we just say, let's do the opposite and it'll be good. What we get is just not bad. And and with leaders, a lot of times we aren't necessarily taught what healthy leadership looks like. Mm. We're just experiencing leadership and we're, we're trying to decipher what's, what's healthy, what's not healthy. We see leaders that accomplish a lot of things to the detriment of their family, their friends, their relationships. We see a lot of people who, who are leaders who are doing amazing things for money for all the wrong reasons. Right. And so, when you use this term healthy leader, I look at it and I say it's whole. It's a, mm. a holistic approach to leadership. Okay. Yep. Um, and, and when we look at being whole, a lot of times it's about finding that balance. The problem is we never find balance. We have to create it. Ooh. Balance is not something that we can find. We have to create it. And so healthy leadership has accountability to it. Um, if you don't have accountability, then it's not, it's like having, um, no counterbalance to balance. Mm. It just doesn't work. Um, right. and so, uh, healthy leaders, I believe are, are developing in the, uh, their calling, their competency and their character all mm. at the same time. And what that is, is it's being developed within the context of community. That's what healthy leadership is. Oof. Oof. Boy, that's I powerful. could take that. I could take that even farther, but um, no. I think for the for this, uh, it's an all day workshop. I think I could do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I was uh, writing that down because that is. I mean, that's super insightful. Um, it, it's so fascinating because uh, we both work with different leaders and we coach different people, and you you see some leaders and they from the outset look unbelievably successful. You know, the sales yeah. are great. They've earned a great income. They have kind of all the toys, but then their inner world is just a complete chaos. Their yeah. spouse wants nothing to do with them. Their kids, you know, haven't talked to them forever. And so it's this, this, and I know it's the tale as old as time, sure. but you know, one of the things that we're passionate about at Speak With People is just this idea of the healthy, holistic approach to leadership yeah. and you, you just nailed it. I mean, and, and to be able to have accountability and then to do it inside of community. Yeah. Whew, how powerful. Yeah. I, the inner world, man. Um, as I was starting to write my book, I actually wrote chapter three first mm. and I was like, I can't do this. I'm feeling like I'm doing a disservice to the reader. If I don't first talk about the fact that we have to be whole and mm. we need to value our inner world the inner world is where everything comes out. And I want, I want to help people grow bigger on the inside than they are on the outside. Mm. Wow. That's good. That's so good. Okay. So speaking of the book, I mean, you talk a lot about the power of influence. Yep. So take us inside of, take us inside of influence, especially yep. in the context of leadership. Like what, why is it so critical? Why is this something that we need to understand? Yeah, that's good. So um, influence is leadership right? Like the influence that we have is our leadership. And so it's, it's crucial for us to realize that the influence that we have comes from a holistic approach. Mm. If you don't have good, authentic connections, right? If you can't answer your, your followers are asking questions about you all the time, not necessarily um, verbally and audibly, but in the, in their subconscious, they're asking questions about you. They're saying, does this person care about me? 
Mm. Can this person help me? Right? Can I trust this person? They're asking questions about us. And I think for us to create a positive impact, not only is it important for us to understand that they're asking, like people are asking those questions about us. Yeah. So how do we answer those? Right? Like by showing up, but also that if we aren't intentional with how we show up, it's really rare that positive impact ever comes from unintentional action. Mm. Think about going to the Super Bowl. The teams that go to the Super Bowl, what would they do if they didn't practice? Do you think they would perform well? Do you think they would win? What if they no. didn't practice? Right. I mean, what if they didn't run plays? What if they didn't think strategically? Like all these things just wouldn't happen. And so it takes intentionality of how we want to show up in the world to create positive impact. And I think it's really important for us to understand that we have influence with every single person on a different level. Mm. Like the influence that I have with my wife and my kids and my employees and my friends, it's all different because it's person to person. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, Speaking of influence in your area, did it kind of rock the area that uh, Pete Carroll is no longer the <laughs> Seattle? <laughs> my phone exploded. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. It was all over the place. There's conspiracy theories going around. There is, I mean, it was everywhere. <laughs> no getting yeah. away from it. Already 2024 has been, I mean, Pete Carroll is out. Nick Saban is out. Bill Belichick yep. is out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Vrabel Crazy. from the Titans. I mean, it's a different, it's already a different world. Yep. What's ha What's going on in the world? How do we, I know. how do we adapt to this change? <laughs> I know. One, one of the things I love about communication so much is, and, and, and this is just kind of my own working thoughts. So you could tell me, Jason, sure. you're way, way off here. But, you know, if a leader is an influencer and, you know, we have influence in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, you know, wherever it's at, communication then is so critical to leadership is because it's how we steward our influence. And yeah. so, you know, the, the healthier, the more effective we are as a communicator, I mean, it, it, it seems to be, it, it's hand in hand. If yeah. our communication is healthy and effective, our leadership will be. What do, you, what do you think about that? Do you think they go hand in hand? Do you think? I think absolutely they go hand yeah. in hand. Um, and I think the Harvard Business Review would also agree with you based on their studies. Mm. Um, communication is the number one um, criteria for career advancement. Mm. So to be able to communicate with people is definitely uh, an extremely powerful way that we can steward our influence. Yep. And I would kind of take it a step further because... Uh, with communication, it's really all about connection, right? Mm. Being able to connect with another person. It's not just about the words I have to say. It's the tone in which I, I use to say it and the intonation and the speed. It's also about my body language and the fact that you're asking those questions about me right now, which is, do you care for me? Can you help me? Can I trust you? And if I come across and, and, am speaking those words and saying them in the ways that I'm connecting with you, the influence level that you, that I have with you goes up and vice versa the influence you have with me goes up. And so that's what creates great friendships and great relationships. It's the ability to communicate and connect. Mm. And that's what powers yeah. the world to move forward, right? It's all powered by relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that powered by relationship. Do you have a story, you know, an example, something, uh, maybe a client that you've worked with where, you know, you watch them, you know, grab hold of that and then their influence just, you know, uh, exponentially uh, changed over time. Uh, say that one more time. Just a, when it comes to our communication, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, going hand in hand with our influence. Have you worked with any business leaders, any clients who in the beginning when you started working with them, their communication skills just weren't there. So maybe their influence was just, you know, barely on the radar. But in time, as through the coaching, working through it, working through some of those skills, their influence began to grow because their communication you know, grew. Sure. And so they okay. were able to see that kind of difference. Yeah. I'm tracking with you. So I, 
I don't have any clients that I've worked with that have that experience, but I have had that experience myself. Mm. Um, you know, I think I shared that when I was in high school, I was afraid to give a presentation and, yes. um, I transferred high schools because of that. And I, I look at my own life and look back and I'm like, man, I didn't realize that I was a leader. Yes. That I had influence with people until much later in life. Mm. Um, and that realization literally changed everything for me. It changed how I interact with people. It changed the, like, I literally have thoughts of like, who is the person that I'm going to communicate with and how should I say this to them? So they hear it, not for what I want them to hear it as, right? Because it's not about me, but how am I coming across to them? Yeah. Am I giving them what they need in this situation? You know, when you have uh, difficult conversations, maybe with an employee or, um, you know, things like that, or maybe it's even a spouse, you have a different conversation with your spouse and you're like, okay, are they going to hear me come across as like, oh, we're, we're doing it like this, or are they going to come across and hear my actual attitude that I, I genuinely care about your, your opinion and your insight and your wisdom? Mm -hmm. And like, how are we going to handle this together? Cause that's really what it's all about. It's, it's powerful. We're all on the same boat moving as paddling powerful. together. Yeah. You know, as you talked about your, your high school situation with speaking, I mean, it's, it's obviously not a, um, you're not in the, in the, uh, sorry, I'm going to say it the wrong way. You're, you're not in the minor, a minority there. I mean, tons of people, right? Like, especially in high school, I don't want to get up in yeah. front of everybody, but it's amazing <laughs> yeah. those opportunities for students because the quicker that they can and face those fears and learn yeah. how to do, oh, I mean, you know, like, like you talked about, I mean, number one criteria for career advancement. I mean, it's yep. so important. Well, I think uh, Jerry Seinfeld said it best when he was talking about it. He did this bit and he said, you know, the, the number one uh, fear is public speaking. The number two fear for people is death. So the reality is that you'd rather be in the casket than given the eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> And I think yep. about that. I'm like, oh, I definitely felt that way before. Um, but you're you're so right. The sooner that we can step out of that. And I think for us as leaders to recognize that that's the reality that we live in, that people are afraid to speak, that people are afraid to get up and do things like how can we meet them where they're at and challenge them just a little bit? You know, maybe it's a small group of people instead of a big group of people. Maybe it's yep. one or two. Yep. Um, give them little challenges to help them win. And yep. then they can grow from there. Oh, I love that. I love that. So big, big part of the theme in the book, generosity. And so, so often, you know, the, I think the moment people hear the word generosity, they think, okay, well, I got to, like, what do I got to do? I got to give some money, you know, I got to yep. do yep. something, but walk us through how leaders can incorporate, you know, kind of how you, you talk, you talk us through, you know, being a generous influencer into their yep leadership style like what what it. kind of impact does that have on their leadership when they're a generous influencer it's great love it so um you hit the nail on the head most people when we hear the word generosity think financial giving and it's like you guys if we realize that generosity is is so much deeper and so much more complex than just giving financially but it's showing up with your time it's showing up with how you touch people in the community, like the impact that you have with them. Um, and the power that that has for us as leaders to impact other people. When I think about the journey that I have of leaders who have impacted my life, every single one of them has been an act of generosity toward me, mm. right? Uh, I had a boss, so I used to work at Microsoft on, on Team Xbox. Uh, doing hardware development. And my huh. boss was just absolutely amazing. Um, I did a lot of growth there. And, you know, there were situations where I could, looking back on it, not knowing what I didn't know, he did a fantastic job of leading me, mm. getting me to do, getting me to do things that um, stretched me and helped me grow without demanding it. Mm. Right. Have you ever had somebody come come up to you and they're like, OK, I need you to get this done, whatever it takes, walks away. They're absent. They're not there for conversation. It, you just have to do it. Yep. The type of leadership that is generous 
influencer focused, generosity focused comes from an attitude of caring about other people, mm. right? And so if you can show up and be kind and plentiful to people and also exude grace and mercy toward them, yep. that's where the game changes. And so as leaders for us, it's, it's in every way that we interact with other people and get them to influence them to do the things that need to be done. But at the same time, it's to their benefit, mm. right? We're looking at it to meet goals together. It's a win-win situation, not I'm demanding this from you, which is most often what leaders fall back on, I suppose. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. My world was blown away and I've talked about it on the podcast. And so if regular listeners are listening, they might check out because I've said it multiple times, but my world was blown away. 12 years ago, I was working on an MBA and one of the classes they handed us primal leadership by Daniel Goleman, kind of the emotional intelligence, you know, a czar kind of, you know, he's the king. And it, my, my whole world just blew up. I thought, wait a minute, we don't have to lead out of fear and control and mm -hmm. force. Yep. Like we can actually tap into people's positive emotions. And uh, it, it, so, it, yeah, you're, you're, you're it's so much wisdom there. I mean, it just, it just blew my mind. <laughs> and I think there's a fine line between um, influence and manipulation. Mm. Right. And, and I think so often as leaders, we, if we're trying to do good, we can, um, we can see people as pawns in like, if I get this person to do this and we can get this task accomplished because we're task focused, we want to push things forward. Yep. And the reality is the counterbalance to task is people and mm. vice versa. Right. And so we have to have them both in mind all the time. Yeah. The tasks have to get done, but the people matter. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. um, balancing those things really comes down to an act of generosity in my opinion. Mm, mm. Well, it's, it's so difficult too sometimes because I mean, there are so many uh, people who don't see themselves already as a leader. They say, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm just a nobody. I, I don't, I, I'm not a leader. I'm not an influencer. Yep. And then they can't grab hold of the fact that they've actually been given this amazing purpose. And I love, yeah. I love what, you know, you, you guided and wrote about that, you know, just when it comes to their own purpose, maybe speak into that for a minute, people who are in that boat, what are some steps they can take to understand that they have been given this great, this great purpose and call on their life? Okay. So I think a lot of times we feel like we're not leaders, um, in just take family, for example. I mean, you, everybody has, parents or siblings or cousins or kids, right? And if you were gone from them right now, what would the impact be? Mm. Right? We don't think in terms of that, right? But if we were to really put ourselves in that position and say, okay, if we just vanished, what would, how would it impact the people around us? Well, most of the time that people don't see themselves as leaders, they have a significant impact. They're doing a lot of things for a lot of people, right? And so this wouldn't get done and that wouldn't get done, and right? And so um, I, I think when we are, I suppose, needing to realize our own leadership, <laughs> look at the people around you and the impact that you have on their lives as in the small things. It doesn't have to be big stuff. It could be, Hey, I cook the meals at home every day. Mm. I wash the dishes. I do the laundry. I care for the needs of my family. Yeah. These little acts that, that happen on a daily religious basis, they're consistent, have far greater impact on our lives than the big things. I would say big mm -hmm. things are impactful and they're meaningful, but Real meaning is found in the day-to-day -day small stuff. Mm, absolutely. You, uh, you write about, I'm trying to remember what chapter, but you bring up the kind of the scarcity abundance mentality. Yep. And it's, yep. it, it's, it's so hard. Once people are in that scarcity mindset, whew, it, it, it just grabs hold of you, pulls you down. It, it does. And instead of seeing things as opportunities, you see things as competition. Yes. Right. And, um, it makes it really hard to get out of it. And so a mentor of mine says, talks about it in terms of, uh, you know, being a river versus a reservoir. Reservoirs are designed mm. to hold everything in. And 
you know, we really don't want to hold everything in. Everything that we get should flow through us like a river. Um, otherwise, it's just a gravesite, mm. right? It You get it and it dies with you. You can't take it with you. And so how are you giving it all to um, the people around you? Absolutely. Boy, yeah. that's a, that is a powerful, because uh, you're right. I mean, we just, we hold on to all of that stuff. And then it's amazing. Like Vanessa Van Edwards calls them uh, the gremlins that just kind of reside in our head. You know, yeah. the enemy puts these thoughts there that, you know, we're not going to advance. We have nothing to offer, you know, yep. so and so and so you're and not, so. You're not good enough. You'll never be able yep. to do it. You don't have the resources, all of that. Yep. So there's power that comes from, you know, being able to change our thoughts around it. And I think that's one of the first places that we need to go as leaders is we change our mind. And we decide I'm not going to listen to those voices. Instead, I'm going to, I have purpose that's bigger than myself. And I'm going to listen to that. And I'm going to go for that um, because it's going to create, create the best positive outcome in the long run. It's going to be hard and it's going to be uphill. Everything that is worth doing is going to be uphill, mm. but it's worth it. hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. And, and we get into these, I think these myths, you know, of, I don't have a YouTube channel. I don't have a big following. Maybe I'm, I, you know, my business is literally, I'm the only one in it. Let me tell you ah. this though. The reality is, is that you still have influence people. If you're in business by yourself, you're not actually in business by yourself. You're still, ha you have customers that come in that you have to have a relationship with that you need to add value to. You have vendors that you, that do things for you in business. And so we all have influence. It doesn't matter the following that you have. It can be yes. one person, but how you use that, uh, I think, was it Mother Teresa that said, uh, I don't know if this was her, maybe it was Maya Angelou. Um, in the world, you might be one person, but to one person, you might be the world. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Powerful. Uh, so as we kind of wrap up the conversation, any advice then to the leader who's going, okay, all right, I, I, I believe this. I, I need to start taking some steps forward. Uh, maybe give them some encouragement, give them, you know, uh, call, kind of call to action to not just sure. be thinking that six months from now. <laughs> well, I think, you know, when we hear things like this that maybe we agree with, we walk away and, you know, in 20 minutes you've forgotten what we just talked about. Right. And so I think for us that that feel that way, <laughs> think, hey, this could be a cool thing. I, I would love to lead people with generosity. Um, character, calling and competence. Mm. These three things are developing all of the time in our lives. And so instead of asking questions when things happen to us that, you know, like, why me? We start asking questions like, what can I learn from this? How am I growing as a person? Uh, how am I developing in my skill set? And how is this pointing me in the direction of what I feel called to do, that purpose that I have in life that's going to impact the people around me? Step into the hard things rather than running away from them, and your Oof. life will change. The people in your life, their lives will change because of it. Um, and generosity is contagious. I 100% believe that. And I believe also that if you can't find a generous person, be one. The world is full of generous people, but if you can't find one, then be one. Wow. Wow. I love that. I love that. Thank you. I furiously took some notes and looking forward to, uh, we'll put all of these in the show notes before I let you go. Uh, typically we ask our guests some rapid fire questions. We're building yeah. a library out of all these leaders who've been on the podcast. And so the library will have, you know, all the answers to this, but it just, I think it will be a great resource. So yeah. we talk a lot about speaking on this podcast. Do you have a favorite speaker? Somebody that just every just single one. time, you know, they just, they just fill your cup. You can't wait to share their videos, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh my goodness. I have to pick one and it's rapid fire. You put me on the spot here. Um, shoot. I would say, um, Ryan Leak. Oh yeah. He's come up multiple times. He was yeah. a guest on the podcast. He's next level. He is next level. Just amazing. Okay. So then a, a podcast, a podcast or a YouTube channel. 
that's either okay. guilty pleasure or leadership development, but it just it just fills you up. You yeah, Pat, Patrick Lencioni's uh, six types of working genius. Yep, uh, has been a fun one. Um, and then I'm going to say too because I absolutely love your Speak with People podcast. Oh. I'm gonna put that on there. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and then, what book? You know, every leader needs to read. You know, this one book. What, who, yeah. what book would you recommend? I would recommend John Maxwell's "Everyone Communicates, Few Connect." <sighs> so good. Yep. That's something every leader needs to read. In fact, we're actually going through that with my team at my cafe right now. Such a good book. I mean, there's yep. he. Um, actually, I have it right next to me because I use it pretty frequently. In uh, oh, that's winning with people. Uh, also, a good book. Oh, sixteen undeniable, undeniable laws of leadership. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few Maxwell books around, Robert. That's awesome. <laughs> But he has some great I in, in our healthy communication skills training, he has some research in the everyone uh, few connect book about uh, what you really will see in your leadership if you really are genuinely connecting. Yeah. And it's yeah. just it's just mind blowing. It's so powerful. I, I love it. Uh, one of the biggest leadership lessons that I had um, was when your employees get quiet, it's not because they're doing everything and they've got it under control. When communication mm. stops, it's not that everything's going well. It's in fact the exact opposite. If you correlate it to family, for those of you who have kids, yes, right. When your kids are quiet and you're in one room and they're in another, and you're like, "Wait, what? They're up to something. Something's going on." <laughs> wow! Absolutely. Oh, that's powerful. That is powerful. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you one last question though, because okay. you live in one of the most beautiful places. I think, you know, I, I've only spent a tiny little bit, bit of time in your area, but I got to see Mount Rainier and went to the Puget yeah. Sound. And, you know, if we visit your side of the country, you know, what yeah. is the one or two things we have to see? Oh, my goodness. I think just <laughs> flying in, just flying in and seeing um, the diversity of our area. We we are three hours away from ocean, desert, rainforest, mountains. Um, you know, it, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Mm. So flying in, if it's not cloudy, you have to just look around. <laughs> That's mm. it. Um, but I think in terms of like things to experience while you're here, it really depends on the person, but there's something mm. for everybody. I mean, hiking is plentiful here. There's so many amazing trails with beautiful waterfalls that are just stunning. Um, there's snowboarding and skiing there's paddle boarding i mean there's boating there's lots of stuff that go on around here that's just super cool can't get anywhere else in the world yeah. we've got an active volcano in our backyard <laughs> um mount rainier is is absolutely gorgeous like over fourteen thousand feet in the air it's just like this monstrosity um yeah super cool wow wow well incredible i hope to uh I hope to get out there and and uh, if I do, I look forward to coming to your cafe because your town you know, sounds gorgeous. If you if you come up here, I'm going to take you out for the day. We're going to have some fun, experience some cool stuff. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Okay, before I let you go, let our listeners know where they can find you online. Where do we where do we send them? We'll put all this in the show notes. We'll also put it in our Speak with People community group. Yeah, so you can go to my website. It's robertjkalin.com. That's K A E L I N. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Robert J. Kalen. Um, I'm like on LinkedIn, but I'm never like there. You can go there. I might friend request you or I might accept your friend request or not. <laughs> might take yes. me a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. And the book is Generous Influencers. Obviously, you can get it uh, at Amazon or wherever they sell books. Thank you so much. I you, I was able to get this at the conference we were at and I've loved going through it and I, I definitely can't wait to recommend it to our Speak With People community Facebook group and, and pass it on as much as we can. Hey brother, I appreciate you having me on here. It's been wonderful connecting with you and seeing your face again. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you again and we'll look forward to uh, what, what's to come. So appreciate it.
All right, my friend. Take care. Well, thank you for joining us on another episode of the Speak With People podcast. We hope that you were encouraged. We hope that you were inspired and challenged to improve your communication skills. I want to thank you again for being a part of the Speak With People podcast community. Make sure you don't miss out on being a part of the Speak With People Facebook community group. Just head to Facebook, type in Speak With People, scroll down and join our community because every single day, We're encouraging each other. We're helping each other to improve our communication skills. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next episode.